All right. So very briefly, very briefly, Professor uh, Lickman, describe your background and what garnered your interest in predicting presidential elections. Well, I graduated from Harvard University in 1973 with a Ph.D. in modern American political history, but also a specialty in the quantitative analysis of politics over time. And in 1981, I was a visiting distinguished scholar at Caltech, and I ran into another distinguished visiting scholar, uh, Valedja Kailas Borak, the world's leading authority in earthquake <laughs> prediction. And it was his idea that we combine his expertise in prediction with my expertise in American political history and quantitative methods to become predictors of the world's most important elections, presidential elections. And that became eventually the keys to the White House. That became the keys to the White House. And Kyla Sporak said, look, I'd love to predict elections in the Soviet Union, but it's <laughs> supreme leader or off with your head. So your model, as described in the keys to the White House, describes 13 keys that can be used to predict how an incumbent party will fare in, in an election. Can you brief, briefly walk us through the keys that Democrats have unlocked or Republicans have lost in the 2020 election so far? Well, the keys always refer to the party holding the White House. They gauge the strength and performance of that party because the thesis is that elections are up or down on how well the party holding the White House is doing. And it takes six keys to count out the White House party, which today, of course, is the Republicans. And they have locked in against them three keys the party mandate key based on the losses in the midterm elections, the foreign policy success key, no big foreign policy breakthroughs like Trump has promised in Iran or uh, North Korea, and uh, the incumbent charisma key because Donald Trump appeals to a narrow slice of the electorate. That's why the impeachment is so important because that would nail down a fourth key, putting them just two keys short of defeat. And all kinds of other keys could turn. The economy could take a dip. There could be a foreign policy disaster. Could be a third party. Impeachment could lead to a real challenge to the Republicans' nomination. Are you prepared yet to say that the announcement of an impeachment inquiry has triggered a scandal key? No. I, I'm waiting for the impeachment itself, which I'm absolutely certain is going to happen. Nancy Pelosi would not go on national TV and announce an impeachment inquiry that just was going to fizzle out. And there's so much already, just days into the inquiry. There's already enough for articles of impeachment. So, Professor, you told CNN in May that you were eyeing Donald Trump to win a second term in 2020 unless, quote, the Democrats grow a spine and do their constitutional duty and move into an impeachment inquiry. Do you still believe that? Absolutely. It is essential. I mean, an impeachment inquiry that goes somewhere, of course, that results in articles of impeachment. If Donald Trump is only the third president in U.S. history to be formally impeached by the U.S. House, remember Nixon resigned of course. before he got impeached, then that would nail down the scandal key. And without the scandal key, it's very difficult to see enough keys turning against the Republicans to predict their defeat. So if the inquiry were not to return articles of impeachment, you're saying it likely would not trigger any scandal. That's right. Trump would proclaim he's totally vindicated. And what could the Democrats say? We fizzled, you know. <laughs> so you told The Hill in a piece that was published just yesterday that you do not believe that impeachment will be politically polarizing and that, in fact, it may reduce polarization among factionalized parties and ideologies. Why? That's happened before, actually. When you had Andrew Johnson impeached in 1868, which is three years after the end of the Civil War. People are talking about reigniting the Civil War, creating great conflict. Like none of that happened. Even though Andrew Johnson was acquitted by the Senate, it actually reduced polarization because he was a chastened president. And he stopped a lot of his outrageous opposition to integrating newly freed slaves into American life. An impeachment of Donald Trump, if successful, would remove this incredibly polarizing figure, perhaps the most polarizing figure in all of U.S. history. And even if he was acquitted, he would still be very much of a weakened figure. 
You have described the importance of the Senate trial in a number of public interviews regarding impeachment, describing how laying the facts bare can be damning to an incumbent facing the process. Does it matter then that it appears that Democrats are seeking a narrow and brief inquiry focused mainly on the whistleblower Ukraine story? I think it does matter. I think the Democrats would be making a mistake to be that narrow. Sure, that's a great place to start because it's a simple, compelling narrative. But you can't put a time limit on an impeachment investigation and you don't know where it might go. When they began the investigation of Richard Nixon, they were focused on the Watergate break-in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters. But as the inquiry proceeded and covered much worse crimes than that, including illegal wiretaps, illegal break-ins, uh, illegal campaign contributions, illegal attempts to rig elections. So the Watergate scandal blossomed into what, to that point in our history, was the worst scandal in American history. We don't know where the evidence may lead us this time. For example, we know that the White House not only put the conversation between President Trump and the Ukrainian President Zelensky in the super-secret server, they also put conversations with the Saudi royal family, and Vladimir Putin. There may be much worse stuff if Congress can get our hands on those conversations. So finally, Professor, considering all of that, considering where everything stands right now, what would be your prediction? You'd have to pay me a lot more money than you're paying me for this interview <laughs> to get my prediction. The truth is, so much is in flux that even I can't make a prediction yet. Understood. But you'll hear it eventually. Professor, thanks so much. Great questions, by the way.